Well, welcome to part two of my video. Uh, today we're going to be covering actually putting the amp. As you can see, it came in, and uh, it's not real big actually. So, uh, we'll, but we'll just go over the uh, building of it. Uh, this is completely just a PCP, a printed circuit board, uh, with supplied parts. And so all you do is solder the parts on the board. Uh, follow directions and you should have your basic module. Now with any soldering it is imperative that you always have adequate ventilation. If you don't do that you'll breathe in the lead fumes and then you'll become retarded. So uh, take that and we'll film the uh, assembly of the board. All right. As you can see the filming kit comes with all the supplies that you need to assemble it. One PCP board, the four uh, dials for cleaning up power, the chip for circuits, two ceramic capacitors, two resistors, one ceramic capacitors, two electrical, two electrolytic capacitors, and two additional capacitors, and assorted nuts and bolts, okay. and the heat sink for dissipating the heat. Also you have your instructions here, and a handy little chart for reading the uh, resistor values of it. So there you go. That's the whole kit in a nutshell upon opening. Okay, with any soldering project, first tin your solder, your soldering iron. Make sure it's all nice and cleaned up before you start doing any of your solder. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to mount the PCP into my little holder here. Let me just get this thing up and going. Okay. So, okay, now we got our board mounted on our PCP. First, we're going to add the two resistors. And you just slide them through the holes. Make sure that they're nice and secure when you get through. You do this to two uh, resistors. So, there's one. the other one. We'll turn them down a little bit more so don't fall out. And when you have them through the holes, spread out the leaves a little bit so that it kind of holds them from keeps them from falling out. And just like that. Okay, I think we're good. Oh, oh, ah, damn it. Try this one more time here. All right, now we can start soldering. Now, again, use lots of ventilation because solder fumes can harm you. And when you're soldering, it's always important not to spend too much time on any one element or else you'll overheat it. And some elements are really susceptible to heat damage. Uh, resistors not so much, but some of the integrated circuits on this chip are. Okay, we got them both soldered. And then, next thing you do is we trim off the leads so that all we have are just the soldered back ends. Now, if you do a lot of uh, electronics projects or you're thinking about starting, uh, keep these. They actually come in really handy if you need jumpers or doing any breadboard projects or anything of that sort. So, yeah, that's pretty much what we do. Okay. Now, next thing on our list are adding the uh, three ceramic capacitors. And we flip the board over so we can see where they belong. And we review the instructions. And we st the instructions here uh, tell us which ones we need to install and what location they go in. So we got those guys right there.
Okay, now next up, we're going to install the two capacitors for your input lines. These guys are a little difficult because their leads are so short. But uh, as you can see, it tells us what location on the board they go in, so that's it. We're going to just go ahead and install it. Again, check to make sure my PCP is intact and load them into the slot. Okay, now next up are the two electrolytic capacitors. These big guys are important because they can only go in one way. You gotta put the long lead into the positive end on the PCP. That's important because if they don't go in that way, then they just don't work. Polarity is very important on these. So now we're gonna load them into the board. First review of the instructions again. Long lead goes into positive slot. And now we're going to load it in and confirm long lead, positive slot. And that's it. You slide them in and just do what you do. Bend the leads so don't fall out when you go and solder them in. Alrighty. Okay, now next up are our four diodes. These guys are important because they only work one way. Power goes in one direction and it'll go all the way through no problem. But if power goes into the opposite end, it's stopped. These are very important to be put in the correct way and they're used to clean up the power from our AC source. So, now we're going to grab our uh, instructions here to verify which way they get installed. As you can see, we have our four, and the instructions show that the silver stripe on the capacitor lines up with the white stripe on the board, and that should be the correct way of installation. So we just bend our leads and install them as usual. I mean, these leads are a little bit thicker, so they're a little bit tougher to snip at the end, but that's pretty much it. We'll just speed this up and cut through this bolt. Okay, next up is the integrated circuit. And this guy is pretty much the heart and brain of the whole project here. Without it, it won't amplify or do anything without it. So, uh, now we're going to install it into the board. Now, you don't have very much to play with, and oh, make sure that that side is on the outside of the board as stated in the instructions. Again, uh, height's also very important. You don't want to run this guy all the way down, so you just barely stick them in there. Uh, so that you'll have enough room to mount the heat sink when you solder it in. So, okay. Um, again, soldering it in. Um, making sure that you have your height requirement. One inch. And when you solder this, don't spend too much time on the connections or else you'll overheat the IC and damage it. Uh, this is one of the few parts that can actually be damaged while soldering. So be careful and take your time. Alrighty then, it'll just be this. That's it. The fully assembled Velman K4003 stereo amplifier. Uh, pretty simple. It uh, has a little switch uh, terminal to install a mute switch. Uh, there's also other pins to be installed, but I'm going to be installing my sources and uh, 
lines out directly into the board so I'm not going to be messing with the pins. So yeah, that's pretty much it. The fully assembled stereo amp. Hope you enjoyed it. Okay, the last thing I do now is install the heat sink to the amp. Uh, the heat sink helps dissipate the energy generated by the amp to the air. Uh, we have an insulator to install. Uh, they call to put some thermal paste on there. I just use some CPU paste. Uh, you don't want to use too much though because you don't want it to bleed over to the other side. So just a little bit goes a long way on both sides of the uh, insulating plate. <coughs> Okay, and we'll just speed up the installation. Um, before we do though, the installation is pretty much straightforward. You run a bolt through the heat sink. Like this. And then you mount the bolt to the insulator and then the whole thing slides into a group into the notches on either side of the uh, IC. Um, the only thing is is that installing the uh, washer, lock washer nut was a pain because the two big capacitors kind of got in the way of the uh, socket I was going to use so I just ran them down to the point where they are just finger tight. So yeah, that's pretty much how it goes and we'll speed this up and show you the install. And that's it. Not real big. Now line in, or power in, and in the side terminals is where your inputs and output leads go. And that's it. Not real big, but it was fun. Hope you enjoy.